turning it down, changing lives, making well, money, everybody, changing lives. She was so elated that I called her today. Wanted to let so you know elated. we are going live. We're going live right now on Facebook for our 12 o'clock Magnificent Monday Lunch and Learn. And I'll be joined via Google Hangouts by Ray Hendrickson, a national director, world-class trainer, and Mr. Mariko Turner. So we're, we're going to patch them in, and we're going to do it via the Internet. I mean, we try to use technology. You see Ray Hendrickson there? Ray, can you wave at the people? All right, everybody? So that's how we're getting down. And when it gets to my part of the call, you'll see me. So maybe you can ask Mr. Mariko Turner to come back to the forefront of the call. Everybody, we're doing something that we've never done. We're live, live, and even more live on the call. I'm going to turn the call up. You'll be able to hear Mr. Mariko Turner. Uh, those of you who want to dial in by phone, you can dial in by phone today. Um, I'm here live and in person, <laughs> and my business partners are on the Internet today. Tomorrow we'll be together live together. Uh, there's Mariko Turner, and I'm going to turn him up so you guys can hear him. And uh, those of you who want to call in, you know the call-in number. You can call in, and here we go. I'm turning Mariko Turner all the way up. Marie awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Platinum C Vice President Thomas the Maestro Felder. I'm so elated to be on this call today. It is Magnificent Monday. We are live on Facebook right now. I really encourage you all either to dial in, have someone dial in, and they can simply just dial 641 715 3670, access code 885 200 pound sign, or have them log on to Facebook. Have them go to Facebook.com forward slash Thomas dot Felder, F-E-L-D-E-R dot seven seven, and they can see us live and direct <laughs> on Facebook Live. But listen, I just want I just want to continue to encourage you to get someone on this call. This could be the very call that puts food on someone's table tonight. I said this a few moments ago and I'm gonna say it again. Someone is sitting at work. It might be you. You might be sitting at work right now trying to figure out what's for dinner tonight, let alone what you're going to eat for lunch. If you're having that kind of problem right now, you need this call. You need this information. You need us. You need this information. We're reaching, literally reaching out to the world. We want to help you. That's why we get on this call every single day. It's not about us. It's about you. It's about us helping you. It's about us helping humanity. Let me encourage you, every one of you, get someone on this live feed, get someone on this call. My name is National Director Marie Cochana for the awesome and incredible Team TNT. It's Magnificent Monday. We are marching into financial freedom. And as I'm on this call right now, because I am on a live call right now, I would like to know who's on this call and where are you calling from on Magnificent Monday? Awesome, awesome. Welcome to the call. Virginia is in the house. Who else do we have on? Durham, North Carolina. Who else do we have on? We're live today. By in person and on awesome. the internet. Awesome. Carolyn is in the house. Welcome by. to the call. Who else do we have on? Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Listen, guys, if this is your first time getting on this call, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. Let me encourage you to give this phone number to someone else. Have them log on live to Facebook as well, www.facebook.com forward slash thomas.felder.77. And they can watch us live on Facebook as we do the new live lunch and learn today. It's Magnificent Monday. The time now is 12.02 p.m. We're going live here in just a few short moments, but I'd like to know who's on the call and where are you calling from or where are you logging in from? Who's on the line? <laughs> well, Trying to get like this visual people, right, right now. Brother GP checking in from Florida. Thank you so much for joining us. Who else do we have on? Awesome, awesome, awesome. The time now is 12.02 in just one more moment. We're going to go live, family. We're going live, but we are already live on Facebook right now. I'm so elated to be on this call today, but I want to know who else will be having on this call and where are you calling from on this magnificent Monday? 
also Bridgeport, Connecticut. Who else do we have on? Awesome, Long Island, Strong Island. Welcome to the call. Who else do we have on? Well, the time now is 1203 family, and we are now going live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mariko Turner, and I am the National Director for the Awesome and Incredible Team, TNT. I want to welcome you all to Magnificent Monday. I'm elated to be on this call. At the helm, we have none other than Platinum Senior Vice President Thomas the Maestro Felder. This guy works his magic like none other. And then we also have National Director, soon to be Senior Vice President, Ray the Sensei Superman Henderson. I'm so glad to be on this call today. For those of you all who are joining us for the very first time, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. You could have been doing anything, anything else today, but you chose to get on this call. And for that, we're extremely grateful. We're not grateful because you got on the call to listen to us and log on to Facebook to watch us and hear this information. We're happy because you chose to take a step towards a better future for yourself. And because you made the choice, God opened up the heavens today. He said, because you were loyal, because you've been diligent, because you have listened, because you are following my ways, I'm going to bless you, my child. If you woke up today, that's heaven's permission for you to chase down your dreams for any and everything that you've ever wanted in your life. Today, you're going to be hearing from six and seven, six and seven figure earners on how you two can live a better life. And listen, just like yourself, I got on the call just like this over a year and a half ago because I was hoping, I was wishing, and I was praying for an opportunity. I grew up in a single parent home with a mother who loved me more than cooked food. I grew up in a single parent home with a mother who worked herself so much that she used to get the days mixed up. I grew up in a single parent home where my mother would wake up in the middle of the night to get ready for work. You know, those three o'clock in the morning hours where sometimes you wake up to run to the bathroom. Well, my mother was doing more than just waking up to go to the bathroom. She was getting her day started. And she did this every day for many years. So many that I, I, I personally lost count. And I remember waking, watching her wake up, zip into the bathroom down the hallway, zip back across the other way to the kitchen, just to make us some breakfast and make some lunch for the day. See, my mother, when she was younger, she traveled the world. She was a, a, a jazz singer and a model, but when she, when she found out that she was going to be having this young man that you find in this nice package right here, as Ray Hitchison would say, <laughs> she gave it all up just so she could take care of her only child. She said the dreams that she had before were now on the back burner and her new dream in the form of her only son, her only child, was her new dream, was her new mission. And she said, whatever it will take to get you to the other side, son, that's what I, what I am I'm going to do. And she did that. So much that she would get up, she would walk two and a half, three blocks down the street to stand on a bus stop for God knows how long in the cold until a bus came. She would get on that bus, take the bus to work, she would take another bus to go to school because she went back to school to become a nurse. After class, she would take another bus back to work, and then she would catch another bus at night to come home. Just in time to say goodnight, make sure I got my homework done, make sure I had a nice meal, and, and, and make sure you know, I took a shower. <laughs> and I watched my mother do this so much that I saw it literally tearing her down piece by piece. Minute by minute, time after time, so much that my mother woke up one morning in her normal routine, running back and forth, zipping back across the, the hallway. I got up after looking at the time, and I'm watching her, and it was like trying to catch her in the New York minute. I'm like, Mama, what are you doing? Wait, 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 um, can you get yourself together this morning? I'm 45 minutes late for work. And if I get to, when I get to work, I gotta try and figure out how in the world I'm gonna make up this time. 
I just don't have enough time to, 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 to go in here, try to work an extra 45 minutes, then dart out to school, and then dart back to work on a bus, and then come home. I can't do it. I'm tired. And I looked at her and I said, baby, it's Saturday. You don't have to work today. How many of you all are going through that right now? How many of you all are waking up every day exhausted, tired, and you and listen, and you do it with, with without a single a single second thought? I understand why you do it. Because I understood why my mother, why my mother was doing it. She did it because she loved me so much that she wanted me to have a better life. She was told that she would go to school, get a good education. She get a good job and she make a lot of money, but it was costing her her life. I watched my mother work her way into exhaustion, and it, and it, and it killed me inside. Now, earlier in life, I had realized that I had a talent for singing and songwriting. And seeing my mother like this, I started to explore the possibilities of me being able to free my mother and give her some rest. I started to think about what if I could just take these talents and, and, and make some additional income, maybe I could free my mother. Just maybe I could say, Mama, why don't you just go to school, honey, and not worry about working? I'll be the man of the house and take care of it all. After all, I was the man of the house. There was no other man in the house. So I took it upon myself to get into every single talent show I could in my hometown in Louisville, Kentucky. And I, and I like to say I was pretty good because I was winning everything that I got into. But when I think about it right now, like right now to this day, 2016, I don't think it had to do anything with my talent. I really think it had to do with my back being against the wall. I think it had to do with me being tired of visually seeing my mother going down and down and down again. I think it had to do with me wanting to give my mother some rest, some, some relief, if you will. See, I figured in my mind as a teenager, if I could make enough money to where my mother would never, ever, not, never have to work again, then she could just go to school, fulfill her dream of becoming a nurse, and she could come home when she's done and not have to stay at two, two or two in the morning doing homework and get a proper night's rest. So I went off into the world. By the time I was 19, 20 years old, I had landed my first record deal with my R&B group with the late great rapper Heavy D. We opened up shows for the likes of Gerald LeVert, Randy, uh, Tony Braxton, Babyface, and Jamie Foxx, and this Fox and that Braxton, and that face. We were doing it all. And I just said to myself, I'm on my way. Surely I'm on my way. Because I know at some point I'm going to be able to call my mother and say, hey, mama, quit your job, baby. I got you back. Many of you feel like that. Many of you just thinking to yourself, if I could just get that six-figure income, if I could just move up the corporate ladder, then I can retire my parents. And they can just collect retirement or disability and never have to worry about working, and I can take care of them. Yeah, I know. I know. Me too. Me too, sis. Me too, bro. That was me. And I just and I just started surrounding myself with the likes of big time producers and songwriters like Sean P. Diddy Cole and, and Bay Jim Hall and Teddy Riley and, and, and Dionne Jones and all these different people because I was trying to get somewhere. I was trying to get to financial freedom because I knew if I could create some freedom that I could create legacy because legacy is how many lives have been made better because we lived. And I wanted to make a statement with my life. So I went on after traveling with my group to become a, a songwriter producer. Turns out I was pretty good because I landed a position working with the largest production camp in the history of our time with Mr. Timberland's camp himself. And I said, man, I, I made it. I'm here. I'm here. I'm going to be able to call my mama like the ball players do. And mama, you can quit your job, baby. Welcome to your boss's off and, and, and tell him, as Mr. Hendrickson says, listen, it's been nice, but it really ain't been that nice. It's been real, but it ain't really been that real. I'm out. Peace. Here's your pink slip. I'm gone. That's what I wanted for my mother. And by that time, I was already married with children. 
And I said to myself, I'm going to move up this, this, this music business ladder. I'm going to become the number one producer in the world. I'm going to do exactly what the man at the top has done. But one problem. And, and, and hold on for a second, because I know many of you are having the same issue that I had. Every time it seemed that I was moving up that, that corporate music industry ladder, I was bumping my head each and every time. Every time I tried to try to get in there and say, hey, I can do this. How can I help? It was like, no, 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 we got it. We got it. No, we're good. So I was like, okay, let me try another angle. I got quiet. Stay quiet. Kind of stay to myself. When I saw my opportunity, I, I jumped. Hey, 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 I'm here. I can do it. I can do it. I, I, I've done this. I've done that. I'm, I'm first at the studio. I'm last. I'm last to leave. And I get my work done before anybody else. How can I help? No, 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 no. Somebody else got it. I couldn't get ahead. Year in, year out, trying to get ahead, but all the work was being put on my desk, but the reward wasn't coming. The, 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 the accolade wasn't coming, and the money wasn't coming. And I said to myself, how long am I supposed to do this? How long am I supposed to work? For, listen, am I supposed to do what, what, what most of you want to do in corporate America, work 40 hours for 40 years and end up with what's not enough to begin with in the first place? And then one day I was told, you were hired for a specific job. That's what you're here for. And we foresee you doing that same job until we say you've paid your dues, until we say enough is enough, until we say you can move up. That was like someone had a chokehold on my money. Someone had a chokehold on my career. My career. They told me that I wasn't ready. They said I haven't paid enough dues. Who are you to say I have, who's paid enough dues and who hasn't? You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how I watched my mother tirelessly work herself into exhaustion. So I walked away from it. And when I did, my friends thought I was nuts. They thought I lost my mind. They said, boy, <laughs> you don't leave for working with the number one production camp in the world. Are you silly? Are you stupid? And I said, you don't get it. I'm trying to move up. I'm looking to do something larger. I didn't want to be pigeonheld any longer. And just to make matters worse, right when I walked away, I found out that my mother was terminally ill. What was I going to do after that? I walked away. Not to mention, when I walked away from that deal, I lost my car. We lost our home. Truth be told, we were homeless for a very short period of time. We were forced to go live with some friends of ours, and that was the most embarrassing moment in my life. Have any of you all ever been so embarrassed that you couldn't even look yourself in the mirror? You couldn't even think right about yourself. I was so low on myself because I felt like I had failed my family. And then I found out my mother's terminally ill and she can't, she can no longer work. I was trying to figure out how to take care of my own household and Take care of my mother's as well with her medical expenses and bills that were coming in my home. Well, God is good. Let me tell you, God is good. Because shortly after that, we got back on our feet. A year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. I just can't believe it's been a year and a half already. I pocketed out a good friend of mine. And when I pocketed out him, I was in the midst of another crisis. See, when we got back on our feet, it wasn't all hunky-dory. It wasn't at all. We still had some challenges going on. Some financial challenges. You know what I mean. But when I pocketed out with a friend of mine, I had spoken with this gentleman in almost seven, eight years. But when I saw his name pop up on my phone, I picked it up and said, Ray, how can I help you? He said, no, man, you called me. I said, huh? He says, you called me, man, but I'm so glad to hear from you. He said, listen, I've been watching you. I've been watching your LinkedIn page. I've been watching, you know, reality shows you've been in. I've been watching this and that. He said, but I got a question for you. Do you still keep your eyes open for opportunity to make additional income for you? And I thought to myself, what kind of question is that, man? Heck, yes, I am, bro. What do you have? My mind was open. My heart was receptive. 
I was ready to receive whatever it was God had for me at that moment because right before that pocket dial came, went, came in, I had just finished praying, asking God to open up a door for me. I heard that if you, ask, you have not because you ask not. So I was, God, I need more. Can you hear me? Maybe I need to be a little bit loud. And I really think it was that last knock that he was like, because you've been diligent, because you've been loyal, I'm going to open heaven to you. That phone call changed my life. He introduced me to a business opportunity that has been sweeping across this country and about seven to ten other countries around the globe. He introduced me to a gentleman who was the chief, lead chief attorney for black entertainment television. This guy, when I looked, I saw his name, I said, whoa, 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 Ray, how do you know this guy? He said, that's my senior partner. He sent me a video that explained 95% about the opportunity, what they do and how they got paid. I said, Ray, I've got to, I've got to meet this guy. How do I meet him? He said, did you finish the video? Truth be told, I was 30 seconds into the video before I called him back because I saw the man's name. His name was Thomas Felder. I had seen his name at the end of, of 106 and Parking, Spring Bling and Hits from the Street and all these, these BET television shows. And I said, Ray, I've got to, listen, you've got to introduce me to the guy. He can help me. He said, Mariko, I will help you when you watch the rest of the video. Don't call me back until you finish the video. I hung up and finished that video. My life has never been the same. If you're on this call right now and you've been hoping, wishing, and praying like I was, and you're just looking for some, you're just looking for some air, you're just looking to get your, maybe get your nose and your mouth out of the water just so you can take a breath and go back under, and then maybe come out victorious, then you're on this call and this live stream for a reason. God tapped you on your shoulder and said, You've been knocking, you've been loyal, you've been disciplined, you have been hoping, wishing, and praying. Here you go, my child. Just like you, I was in the same predicament. So what I want to do for you all today is I want to introduce you to the two gentlemen that, that threw me in my lifeline, that saved me in my family's life, that gave me an opportunity where I felt like there were none. And they asked for nothing in return. And they consistently keep on pushing me and teaching me and mentoring me. You need a mentor. You need a friend that'll stick closer to you than a brother and a sister and a cousin. So I want to introduce you all to someone I have a tremendous amount of respect for. This gentleman knows 100% of what it takes to succeed in business. He's had a lot of success in a very short period of time. He literally spends his days and nights and evenings and weekends helping people just like you and I earn additional income and he's having a lot of fun doing it. So I introduce to some and reacquaint with others, my friend, my brother, top producing, top training in all of network marketing, hands down, because nobody does a better three-way or presentation to this guy. Listen, I'll put my life on it. So let me bring to the call right now, National Director, soon to be Senior Vice President. You all may know him as Ray, but I love to call him Mr. Ray, the Superman Sensei Henderson. Sir, are you on this call? I sure am. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Bye -bye. Hey, everybody. We're calling live from my, my kitchen. Um, I don't know if I, you guys can see. But uh, that's my Sub-Zero refrigerator back there, the custom cabinetry. And along the left wall is a wall of mirrors with some vases. On this side, we got, uh, let's see, we've got the Viking stove right there, if you can see that. And then we've got the farm stand style sink and stainless steel. And So this is where we make home. And here's the thing. I, I love what Mr. Turner said. He said some things that would inspire the dead. And if you didn't get anything that he said, if nothing has impacted you, if it didn't raise the hair on the back of your neck, if it didn't encourage you or motivate you or inspire you to do something, then I'm not altogether sure there's anything that can be done. But what I will tell you is he does that every day with the same intensity. He does it every single day, day in and day out, so that one of you 
just one, no matter what state you're in in the contiguous United States, no matter what country you're in, if you're in any of the seven territories internationally that we're building a business, he's just hoping to inspire just one who is willing to step out on faith, do something that they've never done before so that they might have something that they've never had before. I'm excited about that. When you started out this life, your mom and dad and whomever was taking care of you, they did everything they could to safeguard you. They wanted to protect you from falling down. They wanted to protect you from being abducted. So they gave us a whole bunch of things that we ought to remember. Don't talk to strangers and don't run too fast. You might fall down on a piece of glass and all of these things. And certainly to some degree, they helped us get to where we are. But at this point, if you don't talk to strangers, then how do you meet new people? I mean, I think it's, I think it's odd. Don't talk to strangers when you start your day on the first day of school. Your mom asks you at the end of the day, did you meet anybody? Well, did you just teach me not to talk to strangers? How is it that if I never run as fast as I can, if I, if I can or cannot determine if I'm Olympic material? So yes, what I'm trying to help you understand is that a little perspective goes a long way. Yeah, you got to be careful in life, but you can't be so careful as to do nothing because if nothing changes, nothing changes. So what is it that you want? We are all taught to go to school and get an education to get a good job, to make a lot of money, be successful. And we do that under the auspices of our one shot. You want to be hugely successful. You want to have the nice house. You want to drive the nice car. You want your children to have the finest in education. You want them to have whole organic food. You want to be able to travel and teach them. I call it education on the ground, where you teach your children about the seven wonders of the world while you're standing in front of it, as opposed to looking down in the book. Isn't that what we all want? So now, if I gave you a formula that hasn't worked for you, and it hasn't worked for anybody you've ever known, then something at, in your brain must trigger a flag. Oh, well, wait a minute. If you told me to go to school and get an education, I'll get a good job, make a lot of money, be successful. Number one, how do I, what, what parameters do I use to determine what a good job is? Well, more often than not, the, if the income that's generated as a result of that quote unquote good job. Well, let me ask you, are you making the income that you want to make? If not, then does that negate the idea of a good job? And if you're not working the good job that helps you earn the kind of money you need in order to take care of your family on the level that you desire, then how do you find the good job? Can I tell you something? I want to submit to you guys in all humility, there's no such thing as a good job because every employer has one ideal only. And that's to hire a bunch of people to do the work that he or she doesn't want to do and pay you as little as possible because you are his greatest liability. So now if his objective or her objective is to pay you as little as possible, then your objectives are counterproductive. If your boss is trying to pay you as little as possible and get as much work out of you, and you're trying to do as little as possible and get as much money out of him, then your goals don't even meet. And if your goals don't meet, the divine principle says you'll never end up at the same place. So here's my question. I don't care whether you're 21 or 31 or 41 or 51 or 61. If you're still alive, what are you prepared to do? Because this is really not about your employer. It's really not about the mistakes that you've made and the, the victories that you've had up until this point. What it's about is what are you prepared to do Today, you should ask yourself in the mirror, what have you done for me lately? Are you, have you decided that where you are is exactly where you ever want to be? Because if you haven't, this call is for you. If you believe that every time you wake up, it's heaven's permission for you to chase your dreams down, then this is exactly why we invited you to this phone call. But you're going to pay a price. You're going to pay a price you're going to pay a price. Let me tell you what the price is. The price is your passion. What are you passionate about? I'm passionate about my children. I'm so passionate about my children. I was willing to spend 40 years of my life working for 40 hours 
knowing that at the end of it, I would get 40% of what was never enough to begin with. That's the traditional corporate business model. That's what I was prepared to do. I was prepared to lay my sacrifice. I was prepared to lay my happiness. I was prepared to lay my physical body down. I was prepared to lay it all out on the altar of sacrifice for my children's sake. But my senior partner says, once you know better, you do better. The price tag, ladies and gentlemen, is your passion. And if the price tag is your passion, you can't be so concerned about what your friends think. You can't be so concerned about what Big Mama thinks. You can't be so concerned about what your spouse thinks. If you were born with a dream in you, that dream didn't come from you, it's coming through you. And it's attempting to make manifest in the world because every one of us is given a specific set of skills and or passions. Your passion is something that allows you to be satisfied having a three-dimensional life, but it's also designed to beautify the world. And one of the reasons why the world is in the predicament it's in is because many of us forget our passions, we don't pursue our passion, and we relegate our passion to a job. So if you're prepared to be friends, family members, business associates, and colleagues, for a year or two, you can live like a king. But most people are not willing to do that. One other point before I jump in. Every mentor needs a mentee. And every mentee needs a mentor. If you're going to be successful in this life, here is the winning formula. Find somebody who has what you want. Learn what they know, do what they do, and you will have what they have. Before formal education was mandated by your federal government, there was a system of apprenticing that would teach young people how to be doctors by virtue of the fact that you would go and live with a doctor. You'd become a minister by going to live with a minister. You'd become a blacksmith by going to live with a blacksmith. And you would learn everything that they did from sunup to sundown, and over time, you would become a doctor, a lawyer, a blacksmith. Only in the last century did our government mandate education. And if I had time, I would tell you why. If I had time, I'd tell you. But I don't have time to tell you, but if I had time, I would tell you that education is designed to socialize the masses so that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. If I had time, I would tell you that, but I don't have time, so I won't tell you that. If you want to be successful, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very simple, very simple formula. Let me give you some statistics, and then I'll give your day back to you. Network marketing has created more millionaires than any other industry in the history of the world. In the history of the world, and the second industry that has done that is so far away, we can't even see it on the horizon. Now, inherent in that statistic is more ethnic millionaires than any other industry in the world. I'm an engineer by nature or by trade. Ain't no millionaires coming out of the engineering realm. And did you know over the next five years, 10,000 millionaires are forecasted to come out of network marketing. Your best opportunity to become a millionaire is not in the industry that you're currently in. It's in network marketing. The challenge is you got to find the right company at the right time that markets the right products and services, and you got to be associated with the right people. But when I understood what that formula meant, I went in search of that. And I was so fortunate, Mr. Turner said this so eloquently, you have not, because you ask not, well, I started to ask. I was asking over here. I was asking over there. I had, I had my ear to the ground. I was watching late night infomercials, no money down, spend $6,000, and you become a real estate mogul like Donald Trump. I mean, I was everywhere looking for opportunity because that is the basis behind why so many millions of people risk their lives to get to this country. One single solitary opportunity is all they want. 
They know that there's no guarantee for success. They're just looking for their shot. And we all know who have been through the corporate American mill that corporate America is not designed to help you get there. You need an opportunity, not a job. And so that's what I was looking for. Had a job, didn't like a job. It kept me from being as successful as I wanted to be. They determined what kind of house I lived in. They determined what kind of car I drove. They determined the quality of food my children ate. They determined if I could put them in uh, private school or not. By what your employer pays you, they determine your whole life. And I just thought that was just way too much power for another person to have over my life. After all, it's mine. And I was willing to fight tooth and nail. I'm willing to fight until there's no more fight in me and they're covering me with dirt. I'm going to fight. And so when this opportunity came my way, it wasn't because I found it. It was because it found me. And funny how that is. When you plant enough seeds, you may not ever know what's going on underground. But here's what you got to recognize. There's a whole lot of growing that happens beneath the soil before you ever see the plant manifest above the soil. So just because you're praying, pray until something happens. Just because you're praying, keep praying until something happens. Just because you're praying, keep praying until something happens. Because every time you submit a prayer up, Blessings come down. It may not come today, but remember the seed starts growing beneath the soil before you ever see the fruit tree with fruit on it. You just keep praying. You just keep working. You keep working and praying and praying and working and working and praying and praying and working every now and then. Come up for air and then pray and work and work and pray and pray and work. And before too long, your prayer will be answered. That's what happened for me. September 23rd, 2013, a friend of mine that I hadn't heard from since the eighth grade, which is a month of Sundays ago, called me on the phone and asked me the most innocent question that anybody could ask another friend, especially after so long. The question was, do you legitimately keep your eyes open for opportunity to make additional income? And I thought, there's a camera in here. Somebody's watching me. I expect Ashley Kutcher to jump out from around the corner because I had been praying and working and working and praying. And so this must have been the answer to a lot of prayer. I was hugely skeptical because I was taught to be skeptical. Mama said, don't talk to strangers. That helped me facilitate that wall of skepticism. She taught me if it looks good, too good to be true, it usually is. But she also taught me, son, Keep your eyes open for opportunity because you never know how heaven is going to bless you. And so when this opportunity came my way, because it came by way of a friend of mine, I said, the least I could do is take a look. And I was introduced to the five links business opportunity. Now, you might be thinking, you said all of that to introduce five links. Here's what you got to recognize. Your passion is the price. There's something that you want to accomplish. You're going to need a vehicle to get you there. How do you get from this planet to another planet? How do you get from this state to another state? How do you get from this city to another city? Unless the next door neighbor lives in another city, you're going to have to find a vehicle to get you there. Five links is nothing more than a vehicle. That's all it is. It just happens to be the most lucrative vehicle I've ever found. And I did an awful lot of research. Let me tell you what I found. Did you know Five Links is the number one customer acquisition uh, company in the whole United States? Did you know they are a $162 million debt-free company even before today's call? Did you know they just closed a strategic partnership with a company that is over $700 million? Did you know they've been featured in just about every major business magazine that comes across the newsstand to include the Wall Street Journal, MSNBC News, Your Business at Home Magazine, Four Times Success from Home Magazine, Five times, eight, five hundred, five thousand, a record splintering nine consecutive times, and the only other company that has done that on North American soil is Microsoft. Did you know any of that? Did you know that we're governed and sanctioned by the Federal Trade Commission in good standing with an A plus credit rating with the Better Business Bureau? Did you know that we're the number one corporate business entity in Rochester, New York, beating out companies like Xerox, Paychex, and Valsamox? Did you know any of that? Neither did I. But after doing some preliminary research, I thought, wow, heaven is still in the prayer answering business. This is exactly what I needed at the exact and most appropriate time. 
because otherwise there are 4,200 choices in the United States alone. It would take you several lifetimes to find five others without someone in the prayer answering business. You want to know why you're on the phone? Because you've been secretly praying for someone. So now that this blessing has been put in your lap, what are you prepared to do about it? Now, I will be quite frank, a significant amount of people get exposed to our business. Very few of them get started and fewer still make it to the top of the compensation plan. But when people ask me, Ray, statistically, how many people succeed in your business? Y'all ready for the answer? You might not like it. It might not taste good. Just put a little salt on it. Put a little sugar on it. It'll go down nice and easy. Here's the answer to the question about how many people succeed in five minutes. 100% of the people who want to win, win 100% of the time. The question is, what are you prepared to do about that right there? And so five links, all we do is we partner with all the major players that do cable, internet, home phone, cell phone, gas, electricity, home heating oil, health insurance. We, that's what we do. And we partner with the main brand companies that you recognize, the companies that you spend money with every 30 days. AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, Nextel, GE, DirecTV, Dish Network, Comcast, Infinity, Cox, Cablevision, OptoLine, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. You can tell I do this every day, and I'm going to continue to do it every day until you and I are on the other side of money. We got a nation to build, and we can't do it without finances. Frederick Douglass says no civilization will ever reach its moral excellence without wealth. That's what Frederick Douglass said. And you know what? I believe it. Because every great civilization that we read about had family and finances. What they're doing to this country is they're peeling away the fabric of the family, which impacts the finances. And when you impact the family and the finances, the fabric of the family falls apart. And then ultimately, the civilization falls apart. You want to know why I was, we're in the predicaments that we're in in this country? Because family is not important and finances are negatively impacted. We're trying to restore the order that is in line with the divine design. And we found the most lucrative opportunity in the United States that could help us get there, and it's five links enterprises. Now, I know I haven't given you enough information to make a decision. I'm all right with that, because what we've done on the other side is we put together a 20-minute video that answers 95% of the questions that the average person has, and it identifies exactly what we do, exactly how we do it, and exactly how we get paid. You need to take a look at this video. And I assure you that the only difference between me and you at this point is that when you make a recommendation, somebody else gets paid. But when I make a recommendation, I get paid. And when I get paid, I buy houses. When I get paid, I feed my children whole organic food. When I get paid, I finance my children's education. When I get paid, I fund their trusts. Because Proverbs 13.22 says, a wise man, not a foolish man, a wise man, not an educated man, a wise man creates an inheritance for his children's children, and when I press a dying pillow, I want to be considered by man and heaven a wise man. I found a vehicle that's going to help me do it, and nobody will be able to take it out of my hands unless I'm cold and dead. I'm excited about being here with you on Magnificent Monday. And I'm calling all champions out. I'm calling all champions out. I'm calling all champions out. This is your opportunity to get to the other side. And if you have the courage of your conviction, I say, well, come on, put your money where your mouth is. Let's get this party cracking. Yes, sir. Let's get a thousand millionaires so that we can have our own schools our own communities, our own police, our own politicians, our own airline, our own record labels. We can create our own future because we can finance it and we no longer have to ask permission. That's what this is all about. Let's get the money out of the way so that we can get back to nation building. And with that being said, I'm going to turn the call over to the, mer the most capable among us. This guy is the top money in his position and has been from the day he got started. Only been in the business just over four years, but because of this opportunity, not because he was a corporate attorney for BET, not because he was one of the individuals who penned the largest deals in the history of TV acquisition, not because he owned his own law practice, had a title company, two restaurants, and 13 properties, but because he hit the position of platinum senior vice president in 16 months, and it takes the average person four to five years to do it. 
He's not only the number one money earner in the history of our company at his position, he's one of the most sought after speakers in the entire United States for motivational, inspirational, and informational public speech. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him because he knows 100% of what it takes to succeed in business. He's made an exorbitant amount of money in a short amount of time, and he's made all million and a half of his dollars helping people like you and I create above average income. And in spite of all the work that you might think he is exercising on a daily basis, he loves having fun. He says there's nothing better than making money and changing lives. So without any further ado, I'm gonna introduce the summit, and present to others the number one money earner in the history of our company at his position and the best-selling author of a book called Redefining the American Dream. We call him Platinum Senior Vice President, soon to be double platinum, Thomas, the maestro, Felder. Maestro, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Awesome. Listen, we're navigating so many things, everybody. We, we are having a live call via Google Hangouts, via Facebook Live, via a national phone call line. And um, I'm here at my home office. You know, normally that's where I work from downstairs. And, you know, that saves a lot of gas. That saves a lot of time just going from upstairs to the downstairs. I'm grateful for my friends that were on this call line today. I hope you guys are getting a blessing from what we're doing. Nobody pays us to do this. We don't get an extra check for doing this. Normally, we don't even get a thank you for doing this. So why do we do it? Why do we do it every single day? Why do we give and give and give and give? We give like this because we know that there is somebody out there who's down to their last dime. There's somebody out there that their cupboards are bare. There is somebody out there on the verge of a divorce and you're sticking with somebody who you don't like, who you know don't love you because you got to sort of do what you got to do to keep the money going, to take care of the kids and make sure they stay in school and stay dressed. We're doing it because somebody is on a job working for a boss that they don't like, for a job that doesn't pay them enough, and they just are, they feel stuck. That's why we do it. I, when I got in this business, I know y'all always hear the highlights of my life. You hear about when I worked at Black Entertainment Television. You hear about some of my big clients. But I needed this business. I had taken some of the money that I had gotten after I left BET, and I made some investments. And, you know, investments are what they are. They have a certain degree of risk. And I put a lot of money in play for something that did not materialize, something that did not sort of have the effect that I thought it would, would have. I bought a bunch of property, just like a lot of y'all on this line. And for a while, I made good money off the property. I was living like a king for a minute. But then when that market tanked, it went down and it went down hard. And I didn't know what to do. I carried the note for $46,000 a month. I carried it for one year. And then after one year, I had to tell my wife. I mean, how long can you try to hide that situation? Even if you got millions of dollars, somebody after a while is going to miss $50,000 a month coming home. And I did what anybody would do when you reach a serious dilemma. I had a God-sized problem. I had a God that nobody I knew could help me. I didn't have a cousin who could help me, a friend. My parents couldn't sort of carry that financial load. I didn't have somebody at some downtown office, some, somebody who could sort of fix it, some accountant, no attorney. It's like when you have cancer and the doctor tells you you are terminally ill and he gives you a death date. I knew as sure as day I could probably carry the note, I don't know, maybe a day more. I never expected to carry it for a year, so I know that was only God, that I made it a year carrying that kind of debt. And I had to be at a low point. I had to be at a very desperate point for God to show me this business opportunity. I don't like telling y'all this part of my story. I only want to tell y'all the good stuff. But I think it's necessary. 
When you are making twenty and thirty thousand dollars a month and still feel stretched out and pressed out and angry and, and and anxious, and every time the phone rings, your stomach hurt, and you try to block every one eight hundred eight 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 six six eight five five number that's coming through. When you are running for the door before your kids get there because you don't want your kids to get served, that's some stressful stuff. And I got on my knees. I got on my knees and I asked God for a living miracle. I needed a miracle and I needed it yesterday. I do what every wise person does when you have exhausted all human options. And God asked me, you know, well, let me put it this way. I asked God for the miracle. He asked me, was I prepared to do whatever he asked? I said, yes. And I don't know that I really meant it. Because I think the very next day or the day after, a good friend of mine invited me out to see a business presentation. When I went to the business presentation, I went there angry. I was angry because I was doing 20000 a month, and I thought that this was one of those things, you know, one of those things, those pyramid things, one of those scam things. That was my mindset. So I'm sitting all the way in the back of the room, got my legs crossed, thinking that I've arrived. That's funny how the people who need the business the most are the last ones to take a look at it. That was me. So I'm sitting back there, got my legs crossed, got my arms crossed. I crossed my arms because I was angry and I wasn't going to fake it. I didn't know anybody in the room that night. I wasn't trying to get to know them. Wasn't trying to make a friend. Wasn't trying to pass business cards back and forth. Wasn't trying to ask people what church they went to, who was their pastor, what school you graduated from, what's your zodiac sign, give me your card. None of that. I just wanted to count down the minutes and leave. I was looking at my Movado watch, you know, the watch that has no numbers on it. And I said, I'm going to be in this thing for 30 minutes and I'm gone. And the only reason I was willing to stay for 30 minutes is because my friend... He picked me up and he brought me to the presentation. As a courtesy to him, I was willing to hang around. And I think he, had he not picked me up and I drove my own car, I would have left. I don't know that I would have stayed. I think God just has a way of making sure you are right where you need to be, right when you need to be there. And if you let him work on you, he'll make it so you can't even miss his will. Some of y'all, y'all pray and y'all ask God for stuff. You say, God, help me to pay my bills. Help me to catch up. Help me to fix my marriage. Help me to find a man. Help me to find a woman. You pray stuff. But when God starts to answer, and if he don't answer in the way that you want him to, you back up off your prayer. And you start to add stuff on the end of the prayer like, if it be your will. <laughs> right? God wants you to, to have peace. He wants you to have prosperity. He wants you to have happiness as long as it doesn't violate you being a good servant to him. So I'd ask God for this. I asked God to make sure I was going to be trapped in the business presentation where I could learn how to be financially free. No, that wasn't the way I prayed it, but I'm sure that's the way the Holy Spirit interpreted it. So there I was stuck. November 14th, 2011, I remember like it was today. And I'm sitting there watching the presentation, looking at that Movado watch with no numbers. And my 30 minutes have turned into four years and four months. My life has been so dramatically changed by this business opportunity. And I think it, it changed me because I was ready for it. Some of y'all are not ready to be financially free. You're not willing to pay the price. There's a price to be financially free. If you want to be a star, understand that a star only shines in a dark sky. Don't expect your family to understand what's going on. Not all of them are going to sort of join the bandwagon. Don't expect your friends who have been perpetually broke, perpetually fat, perpetually late, perpetually ugly to understand change. Change requires change. And change ain't easy. Nobody likes change. It requires you to do more. It requires you to exert yourself. Why do you think that people would spend $1,000 on lotto tickets instead of getting into my business, which costs $99? My business is cheaper, but it requires work. 
A thousand lotto tickets cost more but requires you to do nothing but wait on chance. I ain't waiting on chance. I wanted a formula. I wanted to know that if I did X squared plus Y squared, I was going to get Z squared. You know that formula that they taught us in school? I wanted to make sure that my risks were limited and that there was a true path to success. And that's why I looked at this business. So if you're looking at it today, maybe you're like me. Maybe you've run out of human options. And you got to trust God. If you got on this call today, on this webinar today, it's not by accident. You didn't sort of float on the call. You know, you didn't sort of like telepathically get on the call. Most of us have been hoping and wishing and praying for something. And this may be the answer to even your unspoken prayer. Look at it. If this don't work, you can always go back to what wasn't working before. Somebody said to me, is it a pyramid? And y'all know I like to draw. Lately, I'm, I'm drawing so I drew something for you. I want you to understand how this business works, and then I'll let you get back to work. Fair? All right, so I'm going to turn the camera around, and uh, let's see what it's looking at. Let's see what the camera, you know, I'm, I'm not in the studio. I'm, I'm at home. Let me see. Let's see. Go down, camera. Go down, camera. All right, I think we got it. I think the camera's at the right place. Uh, it's shaking a little bit. All right, so I, I drew something for you. Hopefully you can see it. And it talks about what is a pyramid, right? So what you see there, where you see the, the triangle and it's pointing down, that's a pyramid, right? A pyramid means that there's somebody at the top and they start at the top and they go down. It goes, start at the top and go, it's like your boss. Your boss is at the top. He's got... Uh, vice presidents, and then under the vice presidents, there are managers, low-level managers, supervisors, directors, uh, the janitor, the secretary, the guy who watches the elevator, and then you. That's a pyramid. You got the, there's a limited spot at the top. It's a point at the top, and you got to try to get there in order to be successful. That is a pyramid. But in our business, it's not a pyramid. It looks more like this thing that I'm about to show you. Let me see if I can get this camera right. Get this, get my, get my Spielberg on. And what what we have is more like what you see there, right? It's a inverted triangle. It's an inverted triangle, and that's what an MLM is like. That is what um, direct sales is like. In this inverted pyramid, there is a triangle, and at the bottom, we all start at the bottom and we got to climb our way up and there's unlimited space at the top. There's unlimited space. Every single one of us on this call can hit the position that I'm at. Every single one of us on this call can do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and up. Every single one of us. There's room at the top. Don't you know the company won't run out of BMWs? They won't run out of Bentleys? They won't run out of vacations. They won't run out. We get paid for the value that we bring. I want more money, give more value. I love that because it's fair. Most of you on your job give tons of value and will never, not ever, get paid for the value that you bring. So let me show you something else. Let me show you something else. There is a... Let me see if I can work this. Y'all be patient with me. Y'all be patient with me. I'm a one-man studio. I'm a, I'm a one-man studio. Y'all be patient with me. Let me see if I can work this. All right, so here you have, you have a diagram on how we build this business, right? So people always ask me, Thomas, how is it that you have more than 11,000 people in your organization in under four years? You know everybody. No, I don't know everybody. And no, that's not how I built my business, knowing everybody. I built this business by when I got in, I told two people who told two people, and then there were four people. And each of those four people knew two people who I didn't know. And I tried to teach them how to teach whoever they shared the business, how to teach, right? Teach them how to teach, how to teach, right? So those four talked to two, 
the two became uh, the four times two became eight. Now all of those eight people, I asked them to find two people, and I asked them by find to find the two people by using two simple phrases. The phrases go like this: If I found something we could do together to make some additional money, would you want me to tell you? Right? If I found something we could do together to make some additional money, would you want me to tell you? The other phrase that I sent out was, if the money is right and it can fit into your schedule, would you be open to take a look at a business opportunity? That was it. I sent that out to everybody I knew, right? I sent it by text. I sent it by email. I just sent it every single place. And then I got hip. I said, if I can teach two people how to teach two people, what if I taught three people how to teach three people, right? And you see how much faster it grows under that scenario? I'm not doing any more work. I just got more leverage going on. Three teaching three, now I got nine. Nine teaching three is 27. 27 teaching three is 81. And I said, if I could do three, let me just go all out and kill myself for a half an hour every day to teach five people this business. So I said, if I could teach five how to teach five, I now have 25 people looking at my business. 25 teaching five is 125, and 125 teaching five is 625 people. Do you see me just increasing talking to three additional people has changed the number of people in my business by 609 people? Do you see that? 609 people over the course of one, two, three weeks? That is bananas. And right now I'm doing Facebook Live. I've done Facebook Live for five days and in five days, 7,200 people have listened or watched me do a presentation. You talk about leverage on steroids? Take 7,000 people, each one, sharing the business with two people for the course of five days. That now means that over 100 plus people are looking at this business every hour on the hour because they look at the video and they watch it again live, even when I'm sleeping. That's just about six or 7,000 people every hour looking at this presentation. You can't beat this, man. I'm like your boss. I've learned leverage. I've learned what Donald Trump Robert Kiyosaki, Warren Buffett, and every rich person in the world has been trying to teach brown-skinned people for a long, long time. You will never, not ever get rich unless you learn residual and leverage. That's what we do. We do it all day long. Now, I want to tell you one last thing before I let you go. Flipping the camera back to me. I'm flipping it back to me. It'll flip. It'll flip. Come on now. All right, there it is. I have my hand on the camera. <laughs> Woo. Let me tell you one last thing. We have a product, right? And the product is called TouchSuite, right? And then on this TouchSuite product, what we do is we go out and we help vendors get a credit card swipe machine. Between now and the end of the year, $1 trillion of those machines will be purchased. $1 trillion. For every machine that we sell, they pay us just about $200. So on the first machine, it's $50. The second one is um, $100. The third one is $150. And the fourth one is $200. So now you can make $200 on every single machine. And I think it's nice to know that only 30% uh, of all vendors have the machine. So if I went down 10 stores and asked them if they had the new credit card um, chip reader machine, Three out of every 10 will have it. Seven out of every 10 won't. And for once in your life, the averages are in your favor. For once in our lives, the averages are in our favor. For once in our lives, we can be absolutely failures at something and still become wealthy. It is my hope that this year alone, we do $300,000 just on the credit card swipe machine. Because what we do is we give them a guarantee that we will meet or beat the price that they're paying. And if we can't meet it or beat it, if they do over $10,000 a month in transactions, 
we'll give them $500 just for giving us a try. And if they give us a try, and they do over 10000 a month, we'll give them a free machine. And all we want is one copy of one bill so we can give them an estimate. You can't beat this, man. For those of you who wanted something, been praying for something, been hoping for something, on your free time, you can get on the internet, contact four or five business owners, sell five machines a day, and you can make $1,000 a day. If you, if you are a bad salesman, and let's just say you sold one machine a week at $200 a machine, that's $800 a week, cutting and pasting for 30 minutes a day. You ain't got no excuse now. You can put the kids back in, bri in private school. You can stop hiding the vehicle. You can bring the vehicle out of hiding. You can, you can take your creditor's calls now and put them on a payment plan because now you have options. My good friend Ray Hendrickson says the only difference between the rich and the poor are options. The rich have many and the poor have few. And those of you without a plan have none. So today we've served up options. I used to be a practicing lawyer and now I'm an options broker. I give options to people who need them. I'm excited to be on this call today. I'm grateful for all of you. I don't know more than you. I just saw an opportunity and I ran for it. I ran for it like my life was on the line and God rewarded my faithfulness. Faithfulness doesn't mean that you get running when everything comes your way. You got to believe in some things that you can't see to get things that you've never seen before. You got to step out on faith. And that's when God gets to work. When you sort of get in motion, like the children of Israel, they had to step into the water for that thing to spread apart. And God is just waiting to divide your situation and let you walk through on dry land. Pray if you got to pray on it. But when you finish praying, get up off your knees and get to work. The business works. We have been listed in the Inc. 500 nine years in a row. So there's no question about our company. We are the number one company in Rochester, New York. Been the number one company four years in a row. Beat out Paychex, Boston Long, and Xerox. So we know that our company works. We're number 45 out of all the companies in the U.S. who do network marketing. And there's over 4,200 of them. We know the company works. Our industry has produced more millionaires than all the sports, all of Hollywood, all of music, all of gold, all of diamonds, all of oil, all of Silicon Valley can't match the number of millionaires that we have produced in this business. So our industry works. It's been tested. Our company has works and been tested. Our team is the number one team in network marketing. So the only thing left to be tested is you. You're the X factor. If you want things to change, you've got to change. Listen, I thank you guys for your time and attention. I want to give you my phone number. I'll give you an email and uh, take a look at it. You know, just, just call us, text us. If you have a team, stay in the team that you're in. We'll support you wherever you are. You don't have to sort of join us to get support. We don't operate like that. We operate with integrity. But if you need support, regardless of where you are, here's my number, right? I still answer my phone, but text me, right? You see the number, it's 202-409-4456, text me. See, I'm not so sophisticated that I send people to my people's people. I'm just the regular guy, right? Uh, put my pants leg on one leg at a time. You can also email me at run to diamond. Right? I'm gonna write it here, R U N. The number two diamond at gmail.com. Right? I wrote it down there. Run to diamond at gmail.com. I got a guy who he's a professional. He wants me to get lights and cameras and action. Listen, I just want to get busy. We'll fix up the stuff that need to be fixed later on when all of us are making a million dollars. Is that fair? When all of us are making a million dollars on this call, then I can go ahead and I can set up a studio like Oprah. But it's too much to be done right now. We got a 911 going on and I got to take the patient as I find them as we build this business to help us all get to the other side of money. If you need me, call me, text me, email me, send a message in a bottle, a pigeon, a smoke signal, whatever it is.
You won't have no excuse right now. You got people who are in your corner and who are willing to help you. Lastly, some of y'all want to know how I build on the internet through social media. Me at Run to Diamond. I'll be happy to show you what I do on the internet. Uh, that's how I do it. I don't have to go out anymore to make money. Literally, social media is my oyster. <laughs> it's getting better and better. And listen, I don't even mind teaching you because there's 1.8 billion people on the internet me and you will never run into each other on the internet if we were on there all day long so if you want to know how i do what i do on the internet just text me email me i'll be happy to show you um i love y'all to death only love would compel somebody to do this every day what we do we don't give it to you a replay we don't sort of rehash the stuff from yesterday every time we serve this meal it's served fresh and we bend over backwards to make sure you get this information. I went a little long today, but you deserved it. Your boss makes you go long, and he don't even pay you for the overtime. I'm going overtime, and I'm doing it for free. With that being said, everybody, my name is Thomas Felder, Platinum Senior Vice President for the awesome and incredible team, TNT. On behalf of myself, my business partners, Mariko Turner and Ray Hendrickson, I look forward to seeing each of you on the beaches of the world, if not at the beach, at the bank, but more importantly, to any beach or any bank, we look forward to seeing you at the gates of the kingdom. For what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and we lose our own soul? Until I meet you and greet you, walk with the king today and be a blessing. If you're in Philly, I'll see you live tomorrow in Philly. This call, this Facebook Live, this Google Hangout, whatever it is that you're on listening to me by, it's officially over. God bless.